The first deck landing was made on the forward flying deck of HMS Furious in 1917 by Commander Dunning in a Sopwith Pup. During the same year, this machine was successfully launched off a gun turret platform. No particular difficulty was experienced in getting aircraft airborne. The trouble arose in arresting. The earliest scream tried was to arrest the aircraft by a hook that engaged in transverse wires stretched across the deck to which were attached sandbags. In this case, the aircraft is a sop with pup and the trial's taking place at the Isle of Grain. The arrangement was not altogether satisfactory and the scheme finally abandoned. HMS Argus, our first flush deck carrier, started life as an Italian liner. The conversion was completed during the latter part of 1918. She had wires running fore and aft, supported on flats. The wires engaged in hooks fitted to the undercarriage, and this helped to keep the aircraft, in this instance the DH-9A, on a straight course. There was a tendency for these early aircraft to drift or float on touchdown, and the wires were not always a successful restraint. The Westland Walrus was an attempt to modify the DH-9A for fleet spotting. The requirement was to carry, in addition to the pilot, a gunner, a wireless operator and observer. The latter was carried in an extension to the belly of the fuselage to have a clear view downwards. The result was an unbeautiful aeroplane that proved difficult to handle. This landing on Argus cannot be considered successful. One of the earliest types of reconnaissance and spotting aircraft the Parnell Panther, a first world war machine that served well in the development of carrier techniques. Practically the whole of the early carrier experience was gained from it. A later version was made with a fuselage that could be folded back to conserve hangar space, the usual method being to fold the wings. It was a two-seater plane equipped with a 200 horsepower BR2 rotary engine which gave it a top speed of 122 miles per hour. At its ceiling of 10,000 feet, this was reduced to 111 miles per hour. This Blackburn Swift was exhibited by the Blackburn Aeroplane and Motor Company in the Aero Show of 1920. It was their latest torpedo carrying aeroplane with a very good performance and high load carrying capacity. Ideal for ship work with particular attention paid to the pilot's view. It was an extremely stable machine and could be flown hands off for considerable periods. Airbags were fitted and the wheels could be jettisoned in the advent of a false landing in the sea. Its engine that gave it a maximum speed of 98 knots was a 450 horsepower Napier its landing speed was 43 knots. Now a contribution of A.V. Rose, their Avro biplane making a steady approach and a successful landing on Argus during trials in the Solent in 1922. The next year, on the same ship, the Handley Page Handley Torpedo Plane. It was powered by a 450 horsepower Napier Lion and fitted with slotted wings to enable low landing speeds. A fairy production, the Flycatcher, landing on Hermes in 1924. It is seen here as a seaplane, but it could be readily converted and provided with wheels for normal deck or land alightings. The engine was an air-cooled 385 horsepower Armstrong Sidley giving this float version a top speed of 113 knots and an absolute ceiling of 15,000 feet. A successful aeroplane that stayed as the fleet's standard fighter from 1924 to 1932, finally disappearing about 1934. The land plane version on Eagle, with the absence of floats, the top speed goes up to 134 knots and the ceiling to 22,000 feet. The seaplane again. These flycatchers were fitted with Fairy's patent wing flaps, the outer sections of which acted as ailerons. This time a takeoff. There was no assistance needed in these early days with the ship steaming into wind. Sufficient lift was obtained for these comparatively slow takeoff speeds. A supermarine seagull. 
an amphibian that proved suitable for deck landing and used for fleet spotting. The need was to combine these duties with a seaworthy aircraft, which the aeroplane proved to be. Another Parnell product, the Plover. This single-seat fighter was built for ship or land use with special attention given for its use on carriers. It had a very low landing speed and good control throughout its speed range. This is the amphibian version doing trials on Eagle in 1924. Another good feature was the easy interchangeability of many parts. For instance, it could be fitted with either a Sidley, Jaguar or Bristol Jupiter engine, the changes being rapidly made by the removal of four pins and the whole fairing could be stripped in little more than 30 seconds. In 1924, the accident rate was high, 33%. With the introduction of wheel brakes, landing flaps, suitable deck control, things improved and in 1929, 99% of the landings were without accident. This Avro 504 is one of the unlucky ones. The first effort to improve the takeoff run of a Fairy 3D, a heavier type of aircraft. These trials took place in August during 1924. The machine was mounted on a free trolley. The first experiment proved successful, but on the second occasion the trolley was lost overboard and the scheme abandoned. This picture is slowed down five times approximately to aid analysis. The Handley Page Hendon on Argus, a two-seater version of the Handley an experimental machine to demonstrate the slotted wing. It proved very successful and it was possible to land on board with a full wall load of petrol and torpedoes, etc. The first time this had been attempted. It was also possible to land with the ship steaming downwind, another unheard of. This a ferry machine, the Ferry Ferret, a three-seater fleet reconnaissance aircraft driven with a Bristol Jupiter engine. A Hawker aeroplane of a similar type, the Hedgehog, carrying a crew of three with a somewhat shorter wingspan, powered by the Bristol Jupiter and to be used for reconnaissance. Argus, as seen from a Blackburn, doing a steady landing approach. In 1924, the Argus and Hermes were considered reserve vessels and all fleet aircraft were concentrated on glorious, courageous, furious and eagle. The expansion of the fleet air arm was very slow. The total number of aircraft in 1924 totaled only 105 and despite all efforts rose only to 135 by 1928 and by 1933 the grand total was still only 159. In 1925, reconnaissance aircraft under development or in service were ferrets, airedales, hedgehogs, seagulls, sturgeons, pikes, bisons, pitots, fairy 3Fs and seamews. The torpedo bombers consisted of rippons, harrows, hendons and darts. The spotters were blackmans and bisons and the fighting was left to the flycatcher. The largest and at that time considered to be the most important part of the fleet aircraft activities was reconnaissance and for this reason, slow-flying aircraft was considered an advantage. This Blackburn Dart is taking off during trials in HMS Furious during 1925. And now landing. The Dart came into service in 1923, powered by a Napier Lion engine a power unit that was almost standard in naval aircraft for 10 years. It had a maximum speed of 80 knots and endurance of 3 hours. A very successful aeroplane that was eventually replaced by the Ripon. This flycatcher is endeavouring to shed its floats. It has succeeded in dropping one, the second has become impaled on a skid and caused some embarrassment until it was eventually shaken clear. The idea was that the float machine could shed its floats to improve its performance and eventually land back on deck by skids. These skids, an RAE product, are undergoing tests in Furious, the year 1925. Having eventually dropped both floats, the machine is free to land. At this time there was some prejudice against small flying boats and amphibians were being considered. Three types of aircraft were in mind, the ship plane amphibian with detachable floats, the non-convertible amphibian and the non-convertible ship plane. This latter was finally developed. 
These landing trials were competitively successful. The takeoff too, but the skid idea was not developed for ship work. This is a trial of the first catapult installation in Vindictive. The catapult was designed by Falkland Carey, and these tests taking place at Chatham in 1925 with a dead load aircraft. The Carey catapult was actuated by compressed air acting on a ram cylinder unit and the power transmitted through a multi-reeve rope pulley system. Previous to this, two catapults were built during the First World War, one by Armstrong Whitworths that was eventually erected on a barge and tested at Newcastle on Tyne. The other was constructed by Waygood Otis. This one was designed by Carey and erected at Hendon. Neither of them fulfilled the specified requirements and the intervention of the armistice in 1918 put a stop to further development. It was not till 1922 when the design of the catapult you now see was commenced and is being tested three years later. Running parallel and at the same time, the Royal Aircraft Establishment were building another catapult. This was being developed on different lines. In this case, a series of telescopic rams, each surrounded by annular spaces filled with fluid, were ejected simultaneously with the application of compressed air behind the rearmost cylinder. Now the full load trial. In this case, the aircraft was a seagull. The speed and acceleration could be measured from these pictures, which are taken at high speed and slow the motion down to aid the analysis. This naturally gives a false visual impression of speed. Catapults having proved their worth, development was comparatively rapid. And by the end of 1925 to 1932, catapults had been installed in ships. This is a flycatcher being shot off with full engine revs, but without a pilot. There was some trouble to commence with in catapulting this particular aircraft. The rapid acceleration affected the carburation, and frequently the engine cut on leaving the catapult. In this instance, all is well. The engine was cut automatically after a short duration, having proved clearances of the trolley, and that flying speed was reached satisfactorily. Now deck landing trials in Furious during 1926. The aircraft, a Blackburn Spratt, especially designed for seaplane and deck landing training. It was convertible for seaplane duties and driven by a 270 horsepower Rolls Falcon, which gave it a speed of 100 knots. Its landing speed was only 34 knots. There were three machines built for deck training at this time. A second was the Perch, by the same firm. And this machine landing on now the Vickers Vandes. This could be fitted with the Rolls Falcon or a 330 horsepower Nimbus engine. It had a higher top speed than the Spratt and its maximum and its minimum also higher, 43 knots. You'll notice that the longitudinal wires are missing at this period. They had been dispensed with. The flight decks were clear of all aids, speeds were not yet fast enough to need a resting and take off also without its problems. At this period, too, the Handley Harrow was undergoing trials. It was a two-seat general-purpose torpedo-carrying aircraft. Its 550 horsepower Napier Lion engine gave it a maximum speed of 126 miles per hour and a ceiling of 15,300 feet. The Ripon that replaced the Dart, it had the same Lion engine as the Dart, was 10 to 15 knots faster. At first it was somewhat unstable in the dive, but a more swept-back wing put this right. The Avro Buffalo, a 1926 product, landing on Furious, another two-seat reconnaissance bomber or torpedo carrier with the Napier Lion engine giving it its, a maximum speed of 135 miles per hour. An unsponsored aircraft, the Fairy Fox, 
built two years previously. A day bomber fitted with either a Curtis D12 or a 430 horsepower Fairy Felix engine. It had a high performance and eventually went into production for the RAF. 1927 saw the introduction of wheel brakes. These tests in Furious during that year show a flycatcher demonstrating its manoeuvrability. This self-applied arresting was becoming necessary with the heavier machines and faster landing speeds. This performance was watched with interest and wheel brakes on all aircraft was come to stay. The Hawker Hawfinch, an all-metal single-seat fighter, supplied with two Vickers guns and a bomb rack for four 20-pound bombs, a top speed of 170 miles per hour and height of over 30,000 feet. As a contrast, the Handley Harrow, a two-seat general-purpose machine loaded with a torpedo, giving a slow speed demonstration run alongside. Its maximum speed is 126 miles per hour. This small float plane, the Parnell Pito, was designed to be carried and used by the submarine M2. At this time it was the Admiralty's policy to equip all possible vessels with catapults and aircraft for reconnaissance. These trials were reasonably successful, but no other submarines were similarly equipped, and the M2 was eventually lost through a failure of the hangar doors when submerging. Furious again, and an Armstrong Whitworth landing on, a single-seat fighter driven by an Armstrong Sidley supercharged air-cooled engine. The only monoplane venture of this period, 1928, a Vickers Type 151, a single-seat interception fighter with Geary engine. It was not adopted for carrier work. Now a Blackman Nautilus with a Rolls-Royce F-type engine, a two-seat reconnaissance biplane designed for catapult launching and with easy interchangeability of the undercarriage to floats. Another production of fairies, the Fleet Wing, again a two-seats reconnaissance all-metal aircraft with the Rolls F engine. Two, the Short Brothers Gurnard, a two-seat reconnaissance aircraft. It could be fitted with either the Rolls F or Bristol Jupiter engines. The trials of these last three machines took place in Furious during 1929. During the late 20s, the RAE were testing a new folding catapult together with a new trolley of RAE design. This trolley was made adjustable to fit various aircraft. When the aircraft left the trolley, the front legs fell forward to clear the tailplane. At the same time, the jaws holding the rear spools opened to release. The action can be seen with this dummy launch in Ark Royal. The rear jaws are actuated by a weight that keeps them closed during acceleration and opens them on retardation of the trolley. Ark Royal, who was later named Pegasus, was at this time test bed for all catapults and ancillary equipment. She started life as a merchant ship and was the first aircraft carrier. She saw service off Turkey in 1919 and in 1940 was carrying reconnaissance aircraft on convoy duties.